We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Breakfast Season 2. <sighs> Today is a, a Wednesday. Love that. And yeah, it's just been a chill, a chill day. Filmed another episode yesterday that y'all will see later in this season. And think about the season. Let's talk about in between seasons. I'm gonna need y'all to click the link below, click the in between seasons playlist, so you can watch the journey of me having to film season two. So it's you know just going to work, dealing with work, dealing with car troubles. Having to film an episode, having to get ready to film an episode. It's just like the progression and the progress of, you know, being a podcaster and just all the the little struggles that, you know, I deal with, you know, every day. And I think it's a dope series it's called Ibs In Between Seasons. I think, did I talk about it on season one? I don't know if I did, but I, I definitely did it. I was uploading two videos a week one to two videos a week and it was just me daily shenanigans i put up one get ready get ready with me and a story time about me dropping a mannequin on a customer so that's always good love that so i need y'all to do that and you know if you listen if you don't if you're not subscribed to me on youtube you definitely should go do that Go check me out on Bert Says, B-R-I-T-T-S-A-Y-S. Subscribe. Check out my playlist of In Between Seasons so you can see everything that happened in between the filming of all of this. It was it was definitely fun. And you can see where I film, how I film, how I get ready and all that good stuff. Definitely have to get that out the way. So definitely go check me out. Is my Hello. phone Hey, ringing? I'm coming over. What? Yeah, I'm coming over. Fine, I'll have the wine. Guess I'm having company. I have my friend Raquel with me. She's the company. Hi. So I know Raquel through school. We went to school together. We were roommates together. It was just... Known each other, we went to Buff State together, and this episode is called College Smileage. So I just felt like it was just right. Like, let's have a college room. Somebody I know for sure went to school. Seen the struggle, know the struggle. So yes. let's chat. I'm gonna introduce herself. <laughs> Hi, my name is Raquel. Um, as Brittany said, we went to the same college together. Uh, we were roommates. Uh, for my college experience, I was in college for six years. Yes, that was a very long time. <laughs> but um, I switched my major, I believe, twice altogether. I had three different majors. Um, I originally came in as a criminal justice major, uh, wanting to be a lawyer. Then once I got into that major, I did well, but I just realized it wasn't for me. So then I always excelled at math. So then I just switched to a mathematics major. But then once I switched to that, I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this degree? Like, what job am I going to get? So I was talking with a few people and they were actually electrical engineers. So they kind of convinced me to become like to switch over to that major. And by this time, it was already my junior year. It was a five year program. So even if I was if I came in freshman year, I would have still had been there for five years. So I was like, do I really want to do this? But at the time, I just kind of felt like, listen, I'm already here. I'm already going to have this debt. So I might as well get a degree worth having. So I switched my degree to electrical engineering and I graduated. And yeah. Let's see so. you go. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons because I went so many different directions with this episode. But I knew I wanted to speak on it. And I knew at one point I wanted to do it by myself, but then I knew I wanted a guest because I didn't want my opinion to come with bias. I feel like it's good to have two, you know, different perspectives on the college experience and yes. life after college. And then I thought of Raquel when I saw her, when we was um, linking up last week, I'm like, why well, don't ask Raquel to be on the podcast? Like, I wonder how she would feel about that because I do know that she was in school. She switched her major. I mean, she was roommate. She was telling me she switched her major a few times. I'm like, 
Let's get realism on the show. <laughs> Let's get something real on the show. But you know, before every topic, we expand our mind. Expand your mind, expand your mind, expand your mind. So in an article on www.smithsonianmag.com titled, Will Traditional Colleges and Universities Become Obsolete? Written by Subhash Kak. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. Artificial intelligence technologies like machine learning and computer vision are permanently eliminating high-skilled jobs in offices too. Many world economies, including in the U.S., are turning from manufacturing to service, in which most new jobs do not require advanced education. The remaining jobs will involve fewer routine tasks. The people doing that work will still need some education beyond high school, but they may not have as much need to attend classes at or even live on a physical university campus. Colleges that are outside the very top tier of quality and name recognition and those that have taken on large amounts of debt to build physical facilities will suffer as demands for their services lessen. So, we know you went to college. How has it been life after college? Your, your experience, is, was it recently or was it last year? Um, in 2015 so that was oh, four years ago yeah, so that years. was a long time ago and um <clears throat> for me actually i struggled and i feel like i'm a good example of that degree not necessarily like doing what i wanted it to do for me but essentially once i graduated First things first, I didn't have an internship. So once I was in school, I was working full time. So I have the heavy workload of my classes and then I'm also working. So I didn't have time for an internship. Um, once I did graduate, I did stay in Buffalo. That's where um, we went to school. And I, I don't know if it was the market out there, but I wasn't really lucky with finding any work. Uh, so I really just got into customer service and from there like my family kept pushing me to like look for more engineering positions but i kind of was like losing hope about it and not feeling as confident um but once i moved back to the city which was last september um i kind of renewed my looking for engineering positions and now it's actually finally starting to work out for me so you're looking at it at me graduating 2015 and now in 2019 i'm just now getting into like the career that i went for my degree so i feel that's very typical of a lot of people where mm -hmm. you know you go you get your degree and it's not always you know a smooth transition from you getting your degree right into that career job that you want most of the time people go back into retail back into food yep. service customer service you know any type of job they can get to just pay the bills and get by. And a lot of people do get comfortable and do get complacent with just staying in those jobs. Like for me, even I had given up at one point, like, you know what, I don't think it's going to happen for me. And, you know, this is just what I'm going to have to do for my life. Wow, so. so you almost, almost came kind of close to giving up. Me too, I went to school for fashion merchandising. Fashion merchandising is like, first of all, when I tell people I went to school for fashion, they always, like, you either get the... Oh, that's cool. Or the side eye. Like, no exaggeration. I went on a date with a guy and I told him that I went to school fashion merchandise and I was like, he started laughing at me. And yeah. you know what? I was open to it. <laughs> because, you know what? He was a clown. I, he thought I was a clown. Let's make a circus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, at this point, like, I really don't care. But I went through that too. Like, I've been in, stuck in retail for a very long time. Like, a lot of people think, like, fashion merchandise and degree. Like, nobody really know. They're like, oh, do you want to be a fashion designer? Like, do you want to make clothes? Like, do you want to be a stylist? Like, Fashion is such a big spectrum, but one of my things was to like get into corporate and it's just like so many things get in the way of your career. And they, it's something they don't speak about in college. It's something that honestly, when you graduate, you don't think like you about to be it. Like I feel like the day I graduated, I was like, I finally got this degree. Now I'm about to make some money. And then when you get out, that's the part that needs to be written in the book. Yeah. Because it's not written. For me, I think I was actually kind of nervous, like, because mm -hmm. for me, it was, I've always been good at math, but the whole topics and all, everything was new to me. Like, I'm looking at these, this high level math and <clears throat> science 
for the first time. And I was in a class, you know, it's dominated by males for engineering. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, they they grew up with their fathers teaching them how to work, take apart cars, take about take apart electronics. So they knew they had all that hands-on knowledge. So I was coming from a place of feeling like I wasn't necessarily measuring up to that. And I don't know, it kind of was intimidating for me, but I don't know the internship either. So it's like, I was still feeling like, I don't know, because especially with the engineering jobs, like it's a, it's not just the inter- interview portion, because for me, I feel like I always kill interviews, but when it comes to like the engineering, it's like, okay, now we need to know, like, you know what you say, you know. So mm. usually it comes along with some type of test or, you know, some type of testing of your knowledge to confirm that, you know, the things you do, like any other job for the most part, it's like, oh, like, we're just going to come interview you, see if your personality is a fit, all that kind of stuff. And then you just go from there. So like, even for me, um, I like interviewed, I remember one time with Volvo actually, and it was like so embarrassing and I felt like so defeated because like, like I said, for the, for the most part, like I did well on the interview, but then like he it got to the point where he was like asking me questions and it's like, again, like for me, I just felt like I wasn't confident. And questions about what? Like, like techno- Yeah. Like say like, okay, we have a closed loop or an open loop and the circuit is flowing this way and we got this equals 15 amps and this voltage and tell me like, what is the, you know, outcoming current mm, or whatever. You so, didn't know the answer. And yeah. And I'm just like. Uh, well, all right. So you went to school for this, do you, and and that's another question I had. Do you feel like you grab any vital? Okay, you grab some vital skills from college, but like mm-hmm. vital, like did you feel even not just college, like high school? Do we do like when we talk about that? Do we do the Pythagorean theorem? Do we do those things right. outside of college? Like, do you feel like it really, 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 really genuinely prepped you for your field in um, a way that if you was to go into the job. Without nothing else, without internship, you would feel comfortable with it. To be honest, no. And again, I think that maybe that's just specific to my situation because, again, the high level mathematics that it was. Mm. And the thing was, I actually was good at the calculations. Like when it came down to it, like, oh, you put a problem in front of me because I've always been a good test taker and I would arrive at the right answer, but I just wouldn't be able to tell you why or what significance that has with anything. Mm. So it's like, I can do the calculations, but I don't know why. And I don't know, okay, this is in relation to circuits design. And I, you know, I just wasn't making those type of connections. So when it came to like real world, real world applications and someone's ask, giving me a scenario and then giving me certain information to go along with that scenario, that's where the disconnect was for me. So If anything, for me, like my opinion on college, like overall is I do feel like it does need to be updated to today's society because the way things are nowadays, it's it's kind of hard for just the classroom to be enough for a Mm -hmm. real world application. Like, especially for a technical degree, I think the internship would have been very beneficial for me. But in that way, I know some colleges it is mandatory, but mine it wasn't. I think it would have been very beneficial for me to have that mandatory internship to actually see and experience and be sure that you even want to do that. You know what right. I'm saying? Like a lot of people, you know, they go to they go to school and I think even it's like you have an idea in your mind, like, oh yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like you have this, you glamorize it in a way, and you get your degree. I know um, of a person um, who they actually got their degree. They got their dream job at the dream place. They always wanted to work. Mm. And a couple months into working there, they realized they absolutely hate it. And it's I hear like, stories like yeah. that. It's like amazing. And then you get kind of jealous. It's like, wow, you got your dream Everything job you and you hate wanted. it. Everything you ever wanted. Like, it's crazy. And I just feel like that just goes to show you. It's like people don't really know what they're going after. And I think that's why I changed my major so much in college is because it was the first time that I really came to grips with like, what is it that I want to do for the rest of my life? Like, what path do I want to take? And I just always felt like I had different paths. Like I've always had teachers tell me like, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want to do in life. Like I was always the nerd, you know what I'm saying? So, but, um, 
it was just kind of hard for me to actually come to grips with that. Like at 18, when you usually go into college, like for the rest of my entire life, this is what I want to do. And I think instead of like working that out before I got to college, I was working it out while I was in college. Like, okay, you know, now I see, I don't want to be a lawyer. I see criminal justice is not for me because you do have that pressure once you graduate high school, at least in my family, to go straight off to college. It's not like, yeah. you know, you know how people do, like, they look at you as a bomb or whatever, or they slacking off, oh, yeah, if she didn't go to college or she's just at home doing nothing. Right, especially people back when we were going yeah. to college. I feel like now, now it's, it's changing. Yeah. Like, if you say you, I feel like now, today, in today's age, like, literally now, if you say you don't want to go to college after high school and you have a plan or you have this idea people kind of embrace it a little more back when we was going it wasn't that it was like yeah. you, you going to college or you not and then when you yeah. don't go you feel kind of like a slack like if you don't do it like everybody at least everybody i know like in my graduating class had like had to get accepted to school or or something even if it was something like a community college like bmcc yeah. anything like they made it so that we had a pathway like no, everybody wanted to get into a school. No matter what school it was, they didn't care. Like you, you felt the need to go to college, like mm-hmm. for whatever reason. And I feel like that's changing. So I, I don't know. Like, do you feel like? Do you feel honestly, genuinely, and truly that college is something that everyone needs in today's age and economy? Everything that's going on right now in today's society, I don't. I honestly feel like you can get by without a college degree, especially, Mm -hmm. well, they changed in New York City where you, I think you don't pay for SUNY or whatever, but, you know, a lot of us were strapped with that student loan debt. So it's like right out of college, you have, you know, all this money in the back of your mind that you owe. And I don't know. It's just, like I said, I struggled. I'm just now getting everything to work for me four years after graduating. So I feel like Where I am right now, I honestly could have gotten without my degree. And I feel like for the most part, um, if you really are passionate about something and if you really want something, you can get there without that degree. And I actually struggled with that while I was in college. It was my junior year where I realized, like, I don't believe in the establishment of college and I feel like it's full of shit. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it was so hard for me at that point. I was like, am I going to drop out? Like, what am I going to do? Because, you know, I have older students. At what point? You said, like, around towards the end? This was junior year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's just like, I'm like, I'm all over the place. I'm switching my majors. Like, what am I doing? Like, I was really, like, sitting there, like, with myself. Like, what is it that I'm doing? What's wrong with me? Like, you know, what's going on? And it's just, I really realized I didn't believe in what it was I was trying to achieve and what I was doing. Right. And college is also like a lot of people sleep on the ideology of college, but it's like fake traumatic and it's a lot. Like they really like, let's say you take what, 18 credits. That's what, four class, five to four classes a mm-hmm. semester. At every end of the semester, you got to probably do a 10 page paper. So you got to do what? Four 10 page papers. You got to take four finals. You got to do all of that. And you got to really grasp your mind around it. Read chapter books, take tests and for four different classes mm-hmm. and, and hope that you pass. And, and if sometimes you don't five, pass, sometimes six. and if you don't pass, then it's like you lose this money. You could lose this scholarship. It's a lot. And a lot of people have to take that class that. again. And you got to take it all over if you mess yeah. up. Like it's a really drastic experience. And I get it. Like it says a lot about you to do it, but at what cost? Like, and then to do all of that, Cause when you in it, I feel like when you in college, you're not really thinking of it that way. Like you probably are. You probably like, oh my god, I hope I finish this paper. But you're not. I don't. Yeah. I never thought about it in a way where I was like, wow, I really did that. That's just like mm-hmm. boot camp. Like you really no, in I, here doing once, all these papers. Like, once I, everybody left. Once I was a super senior and all by myself. Not all by myself. I still had a couple people. Mm-hmm. That's when it was like when I got my degree. Cause I feel like I worked hard for that shit. Mm-hmm. Like I was in the the library all the time if i wasn't at work i'm in the library like you just had to we had so much of a workload like you know the first day of school like they come in like oh we'll go over the syllabus and you guys can leave early for the day it was like no like we coming in and they're like all right welcome back it's fall semester we have a pop quiz for you guys today to see if you retained everything you learned from last year and it's just like huh like what are you talking about so it was just very high level but I don't know. And all in all, with college, I just feel like I don't believe in the 
actual class portion of it, especially how you're saying the 18 credits and all that. Mm -hmm. The first couple years of college is like a lot, a waste of your time. They haven't you taken, what do they call it? Like prerequisites, mm -hmm. not prereqs, but it's like those, those simplistic classes yeah, like that the you first need for math, everything. The first... And it's like, if you're not really interested in that, I don't feel like they should force you to take it. Like that's just unnecessary sure. time that you're spending, especially if you're, you know, going for something specialized. I feel like the more you have in that specific degree or subject and the sooner you have it, the more likely you're to see whether it actually is for you or not. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the class portion of college, I don't feel like is really necessary, but for me, I do feel like the social aspect is actually beneficial yeah. because yeah. for me, a person like me, I was super introverted. Um, like I said, I was like, the nerd when I was in high school and like growing up, I had like braces, glasses, all of that. So people always knew me as like the smart person. Once I like graduated high school, I finally like, you know, learned how to put contacts in and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I really came out my shell a lot in, in college and it kind of forced you because you're with everyone every day, 24 seven. Right. So it kind of forces you to socialize and get involved in everything like that. So I feel like that is beneficial for a lot of people. I wouldn't take that aspect out of it, but as far as like the classroom aspect, I feel like that needs to be changed to keep up with today's ever growing society because for the most part, I feel like with the way your major is, I honestly feel like you should start off with the internship sooner or get that real I world experience that. sooner. So it's like, I all right, you, yeah, you say you want to be fashion, you say you want to be communication or business, whatever. Maybe second semester of your freshman year, you need to be having an internship to get that real world experience to say, okay, I actually do love this or actually I hate this. And now I need to think of, what else I want to do. Yeah, maybe an internship every semester. No, like, first yeah. of all, because with the degree, they think you think with the degree is going to get you a job. It's not going to land you the job. They want experience. The things with jobs these days, and I know that too from being a manager, you don't want to train nobody. Yep. Like, even though you're supposed to, you don't want to train nobody from the bottom. If you're in the middle, I feel like you might learn a little quicker. Yeah. But from the bottom, I got to teach you And everything. that's the problem with it's a lot no of jobs. Money. It's, it's like going like, in as the bottom level, entry level. It's like nobody wants to teach you nothing. It's I'm like be honest. even coming just from college, like they want you to have, you know, a certain level of experience. And it's like, well, who, how am I going to learn if no one's willing to teach me? Exactly. And I think that's what or the higher. major problem Yeah, that's what the major problem is. Graduating is someone who's willing to invest that time and money in having you perfect your skills for whatever job you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, that's no matter what, how good you are in college or internships, whatever, that real world experience is not going to change. And that kind of goes back to why I feel like you don't always necessarily need a college degree. Even when you apply to jobs, it's like, oh, college degree or relevant experience. So say if you have your college degree or five years experience already, you don't need that college degree is not necessary, not necessary in that situation. And a lot of businesses nowadays, they also pay for you to go to college after they employ you. So that's a good piece of information too, where it's like, hey, your employer is like, we'll give you this position and for you to further your career with us, we'll send you to school. You can further your education and then move on up with the salary and all that stuff too. To me, that makes the most sense. Like get the degree when it actually matters and when- That's true you know, someone's actually going to be paying it for you and you don't have to worry about it. And so. also, too, it helps you learn work politics and office politics and things like that. Like, coming out of school, you, you in college, you with a bunch of like-minded people. So you were people who everybody is chasing a degree. They're chasing a career. We're all, we're all doing the same exact thing. There's no loophole around that, period, whether your, your degree is different. But then when you leave college, you not realize that you're going to work with people who have already been in the field for mad long, who already might have an attitude, might hate their life, may not have been to college, wanted to go to college, wanted to do a career. You're, you're dealing with mad personalities and you're not trained for that. So you you go into work and experience like these type of personalities and attitudes that you never experienced. Like I, I, you'll see that throughout the season. We talk about that. But it's things you go through 
that you not knowledgeable that you're gonna experience. You think everybody's gonna be mad cool. You can't pick your circle nope. at work. Nope. You can't. You could pick your and circle in college. Fine. We all knew the who yeah. we want to hang with. Yeah. You don't pick your roommates, maybe at minimum. Yeah. But guess what? In a room, you don't gotta talk to your roommates. At work, you gotta <laughs> talk to everybody. Period. Like some it, people will not talk to nobody at work. And then you look dead. But then, then you're the asshole. You're the asshole. They think you're unprofessional. It's one thing to look like. Oh, she's antisocial, but to look unprofessional yeah. is a different thing because that could mess with your career. That could you could burn a bridge like that. So now you think about your bridge, you think about careers, you think about this. If there's somebody don't like you at school or whatever, or somebody, you're just like, oh, that person don't like me. But somebody don't like you at work, you could not care. Why yeah. not? You're not gonna burn every bridge, you know what I'm saying? But it it does get with you, and it's something that's not really taught in college yeah. it's like all they're doing is trying to teach you the skill and they're not even doing it doing yeah. their best job at that so yeah. it's just like weird so with the incident with Lori lawson i might be saying the lady from full house who paid for her daughter to get into a college mm-hmm. how did that like what's the word how did that impact you i forgot which college it was but y'all um, know about the scandal. I've heard briefly about it, but I don't know a lot about it. I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm like really plugged out from uh, the world. So. I'll tell you, she got she paid for her daughter to basically get into school. It's this guy that he'll he'll have celebrities pay him money to get into dope schools, Harvard, Columbia, mm-hmm. what uh, CSU, whatever. Or he'll pay people to take the SATs for them. They he said he wow. would tell them like, oh, just say your kid has a disability or this and that, so that they could go in a room separately by themselves. Full time scammer. Huh? Right, he was a full time scammer getting mad <laughs> bread off of it. And then the girl, she was this big YouTuber. She was already making money off of YouTube mm-hmm. and stuff like that. She wasn't even really interested in college. She was like, I'm not really interested in classes. I'm really interested in, you know, hmm. like going to parties. And have fun and Turn it up. Okay, yeah. For me, how it impacted me was like, it kind of made you feel like, number one, like, what the fuck is college over really me? Because it's people who really don't have money to get into those schools that go mad hard to get into schools like that. Like, it's people that really be in them Kaplan classes, really studying for the SATs, yeah. had zero high school life, like literally going mad hard to get into these schools. And and it's, and then you they try to put these comparisons like, oh, you went to CUNY, you went to SUNY, or you went to Ivy League. And the Ivy League taking any old body in hindsight, they just as long as you got the right money. Yeah, enough donation. Yeah. So it's like it kind of makes you look at college. It, that to me made me look at college in a funny way too, because it's like, what yeah. the fuck is this? Is it for money? Because you you really took somebody for money, mm-hmm. or is it to really uplift us and educate us? You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And to me, fair. a lot of people probably look at that and say it's not fair, but that's real world shit. Like a lot of life and a lot of a lot of jobs nowadays, getting jobs and positions or getting anywhere is networking and who you know. Yes, it is. So. People may not see that as fair, but that's them using whatever money I might get dragged for this. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's them using their money and whatever pull that they have to accomplish their goals. So, I mean, it didn't work out for them in the end because they got blasted on social media and all that stuff. But that's real world shit. It's like you can apply for a job and someone who is less qualified than you doesn't have any experience mm. but is the boss's son or the friend of the boss you know the son of a, of the boss's friend or whatever they're gonna get the job over you just because their father knows the boss you know what i'm saying and it's like you put in all this hard work you went to school for that you have all this relevant experience but it's still not enough so that's that's real world shit where it's like a lot of times not a lot of times but you know sometimes you're passed up on the things that you deserve or you should get is it fair i don't think so but i don't know i don't think i don't think still it should be allowed like i don't think you know it should really be allowed to just buy your way into college or anything like that but it happened i get what you mean because when the incident first happened i was like and it's mad weird we always Mm -hmm. like is, oh, this is a thing? Like, no, not like we knew it was a thing, yeah. but we didn't know it was a thing that people was met, like surprised or mad about. Like when it first happened, I was like, Oh yeah, we know people do that. Like for mm-hmm. like for some weird reason we knew it was a thing. Yeah. And then when they said they wanted to put her in jail, I was even like, all right, come on, everybody calm down. Yeah. Let's everybody just calm down. 
No need to put the lady in jail. You know how many people who else like, should be in jail? Or even people <laughs> lying on their FAFSA? Like, come on. Like, now, like, I was like, let's everybody just bring it down. But I did get the, I didn't think, I think jail was a bit much. But I did start to really feel some type of way about, like, people who really, like, let's say, for instance, she, they said she got, she paid to get into, like, Brown University. And you, mm-hmm. you, you got into Brown University and you got that 2400 SAT score. You went yeah. mad hard. You was a beast, like, and then you yeah. find out they accepting cash funds and shit. How, how, like, it make you feel like the college you went to yeah, is like... I mean, it's going to make you feel a certain, certain type, type of way, way. but I I'm still feel like, like that's just life. Life isn't fair. And, you know, as a black person, as black people, you mm-hmm. ha- you're you normally dealt cards that aren't fair and you Always. have to work with what, you're, what, with what you have. So to me, it's like not necessarily like, oh, that's something I would expect, but... You know, we're taught, or at least I was taught, that I have to work two times, three times, four times as hard Mm -hmm. to get to the same place as somebody else because of the connections they may have or the money they may have or the color of their skin. That's a fact. So do you feel like, too, also, like, there was times where you felt like if I was... If if you were absolutely why, maybe you would have absolutely are you please? kidding me? I know it's so true. Listen, all right, listen. Like I it's said so already, my, my with my major is electrical engineering is highly dominated by males. All right, not only males, white males, mm-hmm. and when even in the classroom setting, if I wasn't the only girl, there was one other girl there. That was it. And then majority of the guys were white and the other you have, you, you know, you can mix in maybe a couple black guys, couple Hispanics, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you already have that mentality where it's like you have to prove that you're just as good, if not better as them, you know, and you can do the job. And that was a big thing, too. Even when I graduated, a lot of people were always telling me like, oh, that's amazing. Like being a. Oh, <laughs> A lot of people saying like, you know, being black and being a female, that's so great because it's almost like, oh, like type of affirmative action. But for jobs like they're always looking for females in the field, especially, you know, African-Americans. So you're going to meet that quota like the jobs is coming for you. You're always going to have job potential. But in actuality, yes, that is true. But in actuality, when you go for those interviews, they're looking at you as a liability. They're looking at you as a sexual harassment lawsuit. They're looking at you as not being as knowledgeable as your male counterparts. And even in, in school, I experienced that. Like we had a test one time um, and I'll never forget it just because of the reaction. But we had a test, the first test for one of our classes. And we went in that day. We They had all of our classes, our, all of our grades listed online. It was by number, but it was alphabetical so you could figure out people's numbers. But I got to class and everyone's like all crazy or whatever. And then this guy, like he was white and he goes to me, he's like, how the fuck did you get that grade on the, on the test? What? What? Wait, like so as soon what? as I, like, I, didn't, I didn't even know what I got I yet. Go. I didn't even know what I got yet. I walk in minding my business. He already on a thousand. How the, who? Did you, a student? A, a student, student, a fellow student, one of my classmates. So I'm just like, huh? Like what? And then um, I go, so I pull up my computer and I like go and check and I got the third highest grade. One girl who she got hundreds on everything, um, she got a 96. So even her not getting a hundred showed how hard the test was, I guess, to the majority. Then another boy, he got a 91 and then I got an 89, which whatever. Right. The rest of the class, literally the rest of the class got below a 60. Everybody else failed. So it was like, they're looking like they, I guess, process of elimination. So they're looking at me like, how the hell is it that you're female and you're black and you were able to do better on the test than me? They look down on you. They think that you're not as capable as them, especially, like I said, they've been doing a lot of this shit for their whole lives. They grew up doing this. So someone who's, you know, kind of an outsider just coming in. They're looking at you like, oh yeah, she she can't measure up. She she yeah, she's not doing like what I'm doing. She don't know what I know. So for me, doing better than them, that's a blow to their pride. So I don't know. I feel like it it, it does show like how they look at you, where it's like you are. Yeah, if you want to meet that quota, that's great. But you are still as a at as at a disadvantage as a black female 
in a male dominated and I feel like field. they think we are always coming in with an attitude yeah like, like, like always, first of all yeah. number one when black people get in a certain setting we already know we gotta act like not like that like we we not gonna get an attitude with you like that like we're not gonna come in there acting rowdy and crazy yeah. and just like which i think is gonna happen <laughs> number one number two a lot of the times when people get black on that work whether you white gold green black purple you deserve it yeah. so don't think that we're doing it because we're black no you get screamed at because you need to be screamed at like <laughs> people be thinking like oh she's screaming because she's black no we're screaming because of what you said yeah. was wild out of pocket as, like yeah. that's as soon as you get raise your voice like, like, like carry on people's like Oh, typical. There, there she goes again. No, of course. But any, and that was the thing too. Even at my job, my last job when I was in um, Buffalo, or whatever, there were there were white males there who they would say exactly what I wanted to say, and I would just be their biggest supporter because I'm like, yes, because you could say it, and ain't shit gonna happen to you. Ain't nobody looking at you differently. But the minute I say that. Oh, I have a bad attitude. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm being so negative. But then it's like, oh, he's just speaking his mind. Oh, he's just seeing, saying what needs to be said. But you, oh, why she has such an attitude? Why is she always so negative all the time? What's her problem? Like, what are you and talking like, about? Like, I'm calling you out on what you yeah. actually need to be called out on. That's what I'm doing. I'm calling you yeah. out and you're mad. Like, like it's not a black thing. Yeah. Like. It's for some reason they correlate like, attitude with us. We're mad people be getting an attitude at work. And I think and that's you looking so normal. I think that even black people take that into consideration. So it's like most of the time you're already talking to yourself like, I'm not going to turn up. I'm not going to turn up. Exactly. And then when you really get pushed, it's like, all right, you really took it there. I have no choice because now it's a respect thing. And if mm-hmm. I feel disrespected, I'm going to have to say something. And even the way I am and the way I speak to people, I don't necessarily need to raise my voice or even curse, but you're going to be, you're going to be dealt a blow. You're going to feel it. Like yeah. you're going to feel, I said what I said. I said what I needed to say. And that's it. Don't ever try me again. Right. Point blank period. period. Like, period. <laughs> Do you think that college will ever become obsolete? Obsolete. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it would necessarily become obsolete, but it's like with today's society and technology, I, I could see it possibly happening. Yeah. Because even just look at just look at how the world is nowadays, especially with social media. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are making their income off of YouTube, off of Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's really changing. A lot of these young kids too coming up, they're like 16, 17, 18, and they're already making mad money. So even for them, they may not necessarily even go to college until maybe later on in life if they say, you know, they want a degree. Right. But the way people are making money is different nowadays. The way, you know, you get jobs is different nowadays. So I could see college becoming obsolete. And that's why I feel like if anything, if college does want does want to stay relevant, they do need to change the way they're going about it. Like it needs to be, I think trade schools have it figured out where mm-hmm. it's like, you want to learn this specific trade. We're going to put you right into the field as an apprentice or whatever. And then at the same time, get your schooling. So it's, it's hand in hand instead of being like, Oh, do all your schooling first. And then you're going to do all the work first. And then you're like, you know what? I don't even like this. Like, what am I doing with my life? At least you're working and you're going to school or whatever they have going on. You can decide like, okay, I love this. This is exactly what I thought it was going to be. I'm perfect. Or you can be like, hey, you know what? This is not for me. Let me explore other avenues to see what else will work best. I think maybe with college, the things that you genuinely, I think you should get a little schooling for will be what college will be. Like being a doctor. Yeah. Nobody not about to do no damn right. surgery on me. You tell me. <laughs> I don't give a damn. Like, you need to go to school for that. Right, like, yeah. I need you to be highly skilled. And even that, doc- doctor with stuff. the doctor stuff, like, I don't know how exactly it works, but I'm pretty sure they like, you know, that also, they a part of that, once you actually go to doctor school, you have to mm-hmm. be in the hospital and shadowing actual yeah, doctors you do. and you do. all that stuff. So it's like, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, instead of all that prerequisite bullshit, like, 
And maybe they're just trying to weed people out, but it's like jump right to that. And and that's and I agree with you completely. Like for college, I feel like it should really just be for like the technical stuff, the real technical, medical, stuff. engineering, um, lawyer, lawyers, like stuff where like all you that really, stuff. Yeah, really need an education. Like maybe something like an FBI, like something where it's yeah. like it's so technical. That you can't really just get up and try to yeah. teach yourself. Like, if you teach yourself, it's going to require a lot of time type yeah. of thing. Do you think that the internet is truly a good source of education? It now is. that we jump into that. Because some people are just like, yeah. oh, I kind of just went out on YouTube. You oh, can, I kind of yeah. just Google that. A lot of stuff. And I, it's funny because I was actually looking into... Um, culinary school because as you know i'm like heavily heavily into cooking and i like trying to explore that as a side business or whatever and um <laughs> and i was looking it up just like just to see like you know take some classes to get like my skills up there or whatever besides like just what i put in mm -hmm. and it was like i literally came across multiple articles not just one where it's just like don't waste your time going to culinary school. Like it's a waste of time. Mm. You shouldn't bother with it. Most of the time it's just for the networking. And even that you can get by just getting the real world job and applications and stuff like that. So it's like a lot of stuff, if you're passionate enough about it and that's something you enjoy doing, you're naturally going to put time into it. You're naturally going to want right. to research it and find out more information. And the web has so much information on it. Every, I'm a person, so when I don't know a word or I don't know something or I'm watching something and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. And I can go deep. Like, I'll just start, you know, researching stuff or even you, YouTubing stuff, especially as natural girls. A lot of stuff that I learned was from YouTube. So that's even, you know, a way where it's like if you research something enough, you can start getting good at it. And there's a lot of girls out here who can pretty much, who become hairstylists just right. from perfecting that craft. So it's like, Watching if YouTube. You, yeah. Now they, they, now they a, a hairstylist. Yeah. Now they booked and busy. Like, <laughs> like let's be honest. Yeah. Even like when I started the podcast, like I thought about it. I, like I knew nothing about podcasting. YouTube, we can talk about YouTube. I know about YouTube. Think certain things. Literally took my time to do the research and then learn. And then once you get into that, you can learn about radio. You can like, like it's such so much the rabbit hole is what I yeah. call it. Like. You start going yep. from this to this. In. Now you educated on a whole bunch of crap. Like, now you not end up here. Now I'm just kind of photography. Now nobody going to be a photographer. <laughs> like you never know what might like happen. Yeah. Like so, I do think the internet really is something that is the internet is dominating everything right now. Retail, the way we shop, the way we it's a great the way resource. we learn, the way yeah. we do so much that it is scary thinking about college. It's good and bad. Sense. Yeah, it, it's good and it's bad. I mean, it, it does make me think of the future of college. It does, for me, I already have online college. I, I mean, for me, I'm not in, like interested in going back to school. But yeah. it, it's not even just about, um, because I don't think it's needed, but it was, just, for me, it was a lot, like I said. Yeah. All that work. <laughs> and I'm not a lazy and person. Here, I'm telling you, it's just that I felt like it was, it was a, a lot. lot of work. It was. And it was unnecessary. And I even don't remember from, any yeah. of these papers. Even for me, like <laughs> when I graduated, like I literally told myself, I was like, I am never, ever going back to school ever again. I don't give a fuck about anything. Like it does not matter. Like you will not catch me back in a in a classroom ever in my life. And here I am about to be going back to school because life is funny that way. But it's like with the opportunity I, I'm getting, I, the schooling is required or whatever. But that was just like for me as well. I just felt like, the way I want, I felt once I graduated, it was like, if I'm passionate about something enough, like I said before, I'm going to put in the time, the energy and the work to do whatever I need to do outside of literally sitting in a classroom and having someone lecture to me about what the do's and don'ts of blah, blah, blah. You know right. what I'm saying? So that's why I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, it, it is a personal choice. People have to decide what's what, best for them. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just felt like, you know, college is not something that is necessarily necessary unless it's like super technical. That but technical, real yeah. technical. And y'all need to and you need to really be serious. They say yeah. they're gonna kill these debts, but for me, I don't mind like if you wanna go to school because you just wanna go to school, like you yeah. need a hobby, you wanna get something done. Like it, it I feel like 
Some people go to work because they want to get things done. Yeah. Some people go to school because they want to get done. Some people, people serious. Some people hide from the real world by getting and, degrees. And yeah, it's just the same. It's like, thing. oh, okay, I got thing. my bachelor's degree. I'm gonna go get my master's degree. And there's nothing wrong with that. They get their master's degree and they're like, oh, I want to get a second master's degree, or I want to go like, back to regular school and get another bachelor's and I'll get a PhD. They just become yes. their career becomes being yeah, a student. To me, I just feel like, like, I mean, yeah, I think what people get caught up in is like, in general, people like want to celebrate those type of accomplishments. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, you're kind of avoiding reality at that point. Because when you're in school, it's all good and dandy. Even when you have a degree worth having, like you see this high, you know, standing degree, like even for me for a long time, I want to even tell people what my degree was. Like when I'm working these customer service jobs, Mm -hmm. because the first thing out there might is electrical engineering what the hell are you doing here Mm -hmm. and it's like yeah what am i doing here so to me it was like embarrassing in that way so it's like you know that's something that i hid for the most most of the time excuse me i have like a tickle in my throat Mm -hmm. it happens (laughs) but um i just feel like for the most part like i don't know yeah i feel like people do try to use college to hide from the world like because they they feel like they it, it it low key, high key could be a form of like, like giving up and laziness. Like yeah. low key, like you. And I learned that too. Going to work is a lot on your mental and your stress level, and some people cannot handle that. Yeah, it's two types of people. It's gonna be people who who just like to quit because they can't handle it, and then it's gonna be somebody who want to go back to school. Yeah, because in school nobody's going to bother you. Yeah. School is school. We talked about that. That's, that's Nobody what I bothers to say, you yeah. in school. Nobody. When, when you're a, cool. when you're in school, it's like you're always being praised, like you're handling business, whatever, whatever. Always. It's only until after you graduate that's when your true colors come forth, and people could see, like, all right, well, she's lazy or he's not doing nothing. Like, what are you about? You've been sitting at home doing nothing. You graduated, you have this degree, and you're doing nothing with it. So it's right. like reality comes at you fast. Like, so what is it? Six months after you graduate, you start have to pay back your student yep. loans. And, you know, a lot of the times, even the, the starter entry level jobs you're able to get, it's like, you can't afford that. Like, right. so they want people all this money. Yeah. So it's like, they go, and again, going back to school, now that puts it on hold. You don't have to pay that back until once you graduate. People yeah. still looking at you like you a vibe. And like, some like, people yeah. don't want that look. Some people don't want that look like, you only doing that and you got a degree. But if you go to college, yeah. people see you in school. But you're not really, you know, in the best work field. They like, oh, she's still popping. Yeah. She's going to school. She's just working to pay her bills while she goes to school. A lot of people using college as a distraction. I even told, like, yeah. I admitted to that. At one point, I had wanted to move to another state. And I was like, I'm going to go to college just so I have room and board. And, and I'm going to get a refund check. Yeah. And I'm going to be okay. <laughs> you can't do stuff like... You can do whatever you it's want. It's a safety blanket. But it's, well, yeah, exactly. You used to learn when you're doing it for a cause or when you're doing it to either show off for the internet or you're doing it to hide from your stress and anxiety of getting a job because, yes, it is stressful getting a job. Hearing getting a those job is getting a job in, within itself. Exactly. The rejection. Some people are like, yo, I got rejection from five jobs and going back to school. Yeah. Like, you're going to get rejected for some job. Like, some people really can't handle it. Like, and they just keep going to school and going to school. And while you're in school, not only do your loan stop, but people kind of stop judging no you. One's on your Nobody back. wants to be judged. And and yeah. I think that's something that we don't When you're really in school, you can be at peace. Like one You really like can. the same thing when I graduated, it was like from my family, like you get a job yet, you get an interview yet? Or have you been applying? Where have you been applying? What states are you applying to? It's question after question, question after, after question. question. It's like, my gosh, please you just leave me alone. I just know, like, oh, oh everything good. Do you need money? Do you need Are you hungry? How can I help you is what they want to know. But once you graduate, it's like, what are you doing? And, like, then, and then I don't want to turn this into too much of a topic. <laughs> But let's not add when you try to get your life together and find a good career for the five years in. Why you don't got a man? What are you gonna yep. have kids? Broke as fuck, yep. jobless as fuck, yep. student loan debt. You oh, talk about a man on. and kid. I'm going back to school. I'm trying to get right. <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm trying to get you, me back together. <laughs> how you say college master right. is like it's, it's like it's so impressive when you after you get out of yeah, school thing like, after thing. and it's not right. brought up like and i think oh, that's why a lot of lot a lot a lot a lot of people use 
college. A lot of people don't talk about it. You listen to this episode, you gotta keep it real. Like a lot of people don't talk about it, but it's not for the the need. A lot of people don't go back to school for the need. They go back to school for the look and to get a lot of stress off of them. That stress of hearing constant questions, why are you not working? You still work there. That's the job you got. You still don't got a man. Mm-hmm. You still don't got no kid. Like, it's like, you asking me mad yeah. questions right now, I'm going back to school. Yeah. Like, straight up. <laughs> like, I'm about to head back to school. Yeah, because then it can look like you're actively <laughs> accomplishing goals and working towards something. And people put everything on hold when you're in college. They're like, yeah. oh, yeah. Brittany, oh, she's, yeah, she's focusing on Exactly. So she's focusing she on her study. She don't got time for me. She right? don't got time for that. that. Like, yeah. it's not something, you know, that people... Everything in everyone's due time. Just because you finish first don't mean... Or what was it? You won the battle, but you haven't won the war. Like, And and, and that's fine. So Everyone does everything at their own pace. And I think, mm-hmm. especially with social media, this is, like, off topic. But it's like, you know, that's something people get caught up in is, like, doing it at the pace of others. Like, right. oh, you see, she's graduated. She's got her master's. She got her man. She's married. She got two kids, mm. she bought a house, she got two mm. cars. You know, on paper, they got everything, all those checks marked off. But it's like, but are you happy though? You know, a lot the exactly. facades, the facade people put That's online is, is crazy. Are you happy though? Are you happy though? You got a master's. And yes, when you put those pictures up, I yeah. like them. But are you happy though? <laughs> Yeah, like, like honestly, and and that's what really, really, what it adds up to. If you, for me, if I was to say anything, like, like my my last remarks is like, if you're gonna go to school, go to school because you really, really want to. You really, really want to. I do. I could definitely see college being like a a hobby thing. Like, if some people really like to elevate their mind, like, Mm -hmm. and just learn things on a deeper level, and they might need college for that. Some people, like older people, I don't. Go back to school. You know they don't know how to use the computer. <laughs> no, you know what? We're not gonna get into that. If you wanna like, you know, elevate your mind and things like that, but don't go to school to show off accolades and to hide from your problems. Yeah. That's not what college is for. College is college is really not. I understand they claim they're gonna get rid of these loans and all that, but it's not cheap. It's 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 not a, a like go get a therapist. I rather you go do that and and deal with the struggle. The struggle is cute now. Yeah. The struggle is trendy. The struggle is not trying. The struggle is trying to lift myself out of the struggle. No, I'm talking about the struggle too. But struggle is 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 very helpful. Like, stop. Don't use college as a way to avoid the struggle. Yeah, it it has to happen because everyone has has their struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, even from my my personal story, Mm -hmm. I'm just now getting to a place where I'm feeling good about myself and I'm making things happen for myself. And a lot of the times with social media, you just see people's highs. You don't see the lows. You don't see the struggle and everything they've been through just to get to that point. Right. You think I've been on social media talking about, what was me? Or I've been in college all this time or I haven't been able to... No. Right. But you best believe when I, when a good thing happened, that's most likely when people go and be like, oh my God, like let me show you this accomplishment, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. You know, so it's like, you can't really compare yourself to others. Move at your pace. If you're going to do college, make sure it's something that you want to do. That's something I want to say as well. You want to do for you and not for no one else. Don't do it because it's something your parents expect of you or others expect of you. Do it because it's something that you personally want to do. And that, that'll help you get through. If it's a goal that you really want to accomplish, something that's on your itinerary for where you're going to be five to 10 years from now, then... Do it. Be your best. Live your best life. Be your best self. And boom. And that's Raquel. <laughs> and I want to thank you for coming on the episode thank of you. Rick Says. Definitely. Oh, you told me your Instagram and stuff like that, right? Oh, no, I didn't. Um, you want to? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My I don't care. Funny. I don't care. I mean, you can follow me uh, Rocky underscore Raquel on Instagram. I think yeah, it's the same on all Instagram, Snapchat. I have the same I'll, handle. I'll add it. Rocky yeah. underscore Raquel. Yeah. Make sure you spell it right because people got me fucked up with my name. But See, this is yeah. why I try to keep them away. <laughs> <laughs>